I'm going to be going over Z sketch here, and this only works when we have a Z sphere, and we have a Z sphere up in our tools, and we have our sketch brushes that we're going to be using with this. Now, there's a few of them in here. I made a custom one right here. I'm not going to go over that right now, but this is a custom one. You may not see this in yours, and that's because I made this one myself. Another thing is if we open up Lightbox here, and we go to the brushes and go all the way down to the last folder back here and we got the Z sketch one right here double click it then we have some more brushes just in case you're wondering where they're at so the first thing that I want to do is I want to turn on the edit sketch or the shift A and when I do this it's now one solid uh, color not to tone anymore now if we open up the materials over here uh, if you come down to the bottom here you'll see something that says the word sketch in front of it these are optional to use and you can use these if you want to use them so basically when I drag across here I get what we call this little strip now, I'm going to show you how to fix this bug in case they don't fix it later on and the bug is if I change my draw size something smaller well, my um, strip is supposed to be smaller, but it's not. It's the same size as the original one here. We'll control Z that. So, typically to fix that is we'll come back over here, select the big icon, and polymesh 3D. And we're going to go in and out of edit mode. Then we're going to switch back here. I'm going to turn my draw size down a little bit. And I'm going to drag across. Now we got that smaller one. Uh, the thing not to do is drag back and forth, back and forth. That's not how this works. And actually, it's uh, recommended that you don't do that. So, uh, let me increase my draw size here. And sometimes when I control Z, it goes back a little bit too far, so we'll turn this back on. So, we're going to go over the sketch right here. And uh, I'm going to open up this divider and I got some brushes over here if you don't see these brushes over here you what you got to do is you got to select this brush and you got to drag them over to the side like that now basically when I select the default one um, you can see when I drag the strip across here it's got a depth and that's for the Z sketch right here and typically they used to have um, sketch one two and three for different depths and if you want to change the depth here we got this depth slider we can drag it up and we can change the drip and you can see it's not embedded so much control do that now you can typically uh, drag this or move the slider or actually type in a number and press enter then you can do your depth so I'm gonna load up another one real quick and uh, Let's bring this one back at the original, I think it was at minus 70, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Um, actually, if it was somewhere I didn't know where it's at and I restored all brushes, I believe I'd bring it back. And let's select here. And there it went. So um, I'm going to load up another one here. Let's close all this up for right now. and I got this little skeleton one I have here I'm going to frame it up and bring it in a little close and we're going to go into edit sketch mode now this is the one that um, had the depth of minus 70 so when I drag on this and bring it out I'm going to hold the shift key and smooth this out I'm going to drag back and forth this time now I'm dragging back and forth with the smooth not the uh, sketch mode Every time that I hold the shift key, you'll see this change up here. See when I hold the shift key? Now, shift key. So, when I'm, not, when I'm holding the shift key, I can drag back and forth. Now, if I turn it to the side, um, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but the, the way it's embedding is that the new strip is kind of to the back side, and I want it in the middle. So, I'll have to do some adjustments. So, I'm going to hold the Alt key and remove this one back here. 
Now I pre-made this one here and this is a sketch 25 minus 25 and the depth is min minus 25 so when I drag on here and drag down let go hold the shift key to smooth this out I'll do a little bit more at the end and wobble it back and forth it's pretty much right in the center this is where I want it you'll have to do a little bit of adjustment adjustments to see what you like now there's going to be certain things that are a factor and uh, draw size a factor the intensity is a factor we can move things around but be very careful when you're moving that you don't move that you can see that it's moving the skeleton I don't want that to happen so keep that in mind and we can scale this just by dragging in and out and we hold the shift key and smooth this but when we hold the shift key to smooth this we have to be in the draw mode that's one of the things that will get you every time um, if something's not working right it's probably because you're not in draw mode so the next step what we can do with this is if we hold the alt key down if you look by my cursor there's a minus sign that's indicating to take away hold the alt key and it's going to remove them I'm going to drag a strip here let go hold the shift key and drag down like this and I'm going to get it one in and I'm going to hold the alt key and remove this so this time I'm going to drag then I'm going to drag off then I'm going to drag up this way now from this point where I ended and this point where I started if I hold the shift key then the alt key it's gonna make a straight line between the two I just have to wobble it back and forth a little bit um, we can also move this a little bit let's say I wanted to move it up here a little bit I'll move it right up here go back into draw mode between this one here and this one here it'll make a straight line shift and alt and we'll just drag back and forth a little bit then alt key to remove it um, this comes in pretty handy especially if you're trying to draw let's say down to the legs here and you're trying to get kind of straight well it, it really doesn't matter and it'll straighten itself out usually when you're smoothing it let's say I come off over here well what I can do I know the top one up here is a line but the bottom one's not so I'll press move bring this one over here back in draw mode anywhere where I select here I hold the shift key and the alt key to draw a straight line between the two and this will straighten it out then I'll hold the shift key to kind of smooth that out a little bit and like I said the um, intensity um, is a factor on some of this stuff so keep that in mind and alt key to remove that and we'll frame that up now I'm gonna do one with the uh, Z intensity here but I want to adjust the Z intensity for my smooth as you can see right here I'm in sketch uh, sketch mode the minus 25 sketch minus 25 but I want to make the adjustments for the smooth so for me to be in this mode I'm going to press the shift key and when I do this we're in smooth one mode and as you can see the intensity slider also changed so if I let go of the hot key and turn it back on the slider is changing so I want to adjust just the smooth and we're going to kick it up to 100 and um, before I even do that what I'm going to do is just going to drag out here hold the shift key and kind of smooth this a little bit here I'm going to press the Alt key to break that apart and drag over this top here and drag over this top here. Now I'm going to smooth this. If I hold the Shift key, we're at uh, intensity 100. This is 100% and it's going to smooth out really quick because it's got a lot of intensity. I'm going to hold the Shift key down and I'm going to make some adjustments and I'm going to tone that way down and you can see now I'm moving back and forth quite a bit and it's smoothing out real slowly and uh, just because my intensity is low I'll turn that back up 
and I'm going to remove this. And as I recalled, I said earlier, when you draw out this uh, sketch here, it's not good to draw down, back and forth, back and forth. You only do that with the smooth. So basically, draw it, drag down. Then you can hold your shift key and drag back and forth, back and forth. So we are in the sketch mode. And uh, if we take the sketch mode and we drag and we drag off, and we come up around the skeleton here what's happening is it will snap to the skeleton all right I don't know if you can see that very good so I'll control Z that and turn down my draw size here and we'll drag up and it'll snap to the skeleton and drag down and it'll snap to the skeleton as you can see there and we'll control Z that but if we switch to the uh, armature brush here and we drag in that direction this will let us drag out into space without it snapping to it so it did not snap to it alright now you notice that I switched to the armature brush so with hotkeys it cycles between two of these brushes and that's usually the shift key so if I hold this shift key down it's going to cycle between the armature and I'll hold the shift key to show you and the smooth one now it's always going to cycle between the two until I change that armature so if I change the armature back to the uh, sketch minus 25 and you can see here and I hold the shift key it's going to cycle between the sketch minus 25 and a smooth one when I do that back and forth. So you sketch 25 and smooth 1. Sketch 25, smooth 1. Now if I want to cycle between the uh, sketch minus 25 and a different one, well what I do is hold the shift key down and let's say I switch this over to bulge. Now when I hold the shift key on and off, we're going to switch between the sketch minus 25 and the bulge. All right, that's how that works. Sketch 25 and the shift key and the bulge. Now I want to switch this back, and I'm going to select the smooth one and kind of bring this kind of back like it was. All right, pause the video, and we're going to go on the next step. Hold the shift key down, and we're going to go over these uh, smooth brushes. We got smooth one, two, three, and four, and basically um, the difference between the all four I'll show you in a second but basically what they do is the way they affect the ends of these uh, new strips when we smooth them out so if we hold the shift key down and I'm gonna bring my cursor over here for just a second so you can see in the video um, below my cursor it says smooth one and let's examine the icon if we start from the left side and notice there is a small little circle then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger as you can see the arrow pointing in the direction of the right and when it gets to the very far end it looks like it gets real large and resizes there so we're going to keep that in mind by looking at the little icon so we're going to hold the shift key and we're going to start from left and move to the right and when I get to the end here and start moving back and forth what's happening is it's trying to resize to the uh, skeleton and right there where the z-sphere um, is at so that's basically how that works control Z that and you can see where it resized at the end on the very far right we're gonna come over number two hold the shift key and we're gonna click this to make sure it's on now if you look we got the three circles what's indicating the strip um, they look all the same size but when it gets to this far right it looks like it's pointing into a hole all right so we're going to start here, hold shift key, and well, it's basically what it's doing is trying to go inside the uh, skeleton here without it resizing. So you can kind of think of it that way, control Z that. And we have number three here, we'll shift click this one here. As you can see, uh, we have three circles, which is the strip and they're all equal size and if you look on the far right it's not even going in the hole there there's no arrow pointing to the hole and the little icon on the far right 
So basically what this does, we'll keep all these the same size from the, each end without resizing and it will not insert into the uh, skeleton. Control Z that. Now I'm hold the shift key and we're going to come over here to number four. Now number four here looks almost, well, it looks just like number one. So the way number four does is we remember number one resized when it got to the end to the far right. Well, number four, we'll shift click that one and we'll just see what that does. So basically what that does is it works like number one, but it does not resize. And this works on both ends. So you can see how that works. Control Z that and uh, let's erase that here and frame that back. As you can see, I got uh, the new uh, project out here, and I'm going to be using the flush brush. Um, basically, how this works is um, if we look at this uh, Z sketch here, I'll tip it to the side and hold the shift key till it snaps. It's away from my skeleton, and I want to make it flush with it. So I'm going to bring it directly towards me and hold the shift key till it snaps because this works on the wor working plane. In other words, when I drag on this, it's going to make it flush against the uh, skeleton directly straight back. So when I drag on the top and go all the way down to the bottom, it will make it flush. I may need to make another stroke to do this. Now you can't stroke back and forth, you do one stroke at a time. We'll just take a look at this and take a look. Now you can see the Z sketch is to the uh, skeleton and it's flush. Well, I'll control Z that and you can see it got spaced back. And what I mean by the working plane, if I tip this to the little side here and I drag on the top and drag all the way down, I'm going to let go and I'm going to keep on doing this. Well, actually what this is doing is it's pushing it straight back. And you can see now it's off center from the uh, front here, and but it's flush on the side here is because I had it tipped. So if I control Z this, you'll see it move back to the original center a little bit. So typically you want to work in the working plane directly at you, um, depending in most cases that you would want this. So the next thing is with the Alt key. So if we hold the Alt key down and start on the top and stroke and do this once, well, this will bring it past where it was supposed to be flushed at and this will bring this into the skeleton. Now we can also do this more than once. As you can see I bring it back to the back side. This next one we're going to go over here is the flush dynamic and basically this works like the flush but does not work on the screen working plane so if I tip it a little bit to the side here it'll flatten out according to your stroke now I can't get this to work and um, I don't know if this is a bug or you may need to have a pen tablet which I do not have so I'll have to skip this part and we'll go on to the next step The next one we're going to be using here is the flush resize. We're going to double click that. And so we can kind of see how this is going to work. We're going to go ahead and move this over to the side a little bit. We're going to scale this a little bit so it's a little bit uh, larger than the rest of these. And I'll also kind of move it up to the front here just a little bit so we're gonna go back into draw mode here and we have the flush resize on and basically this is going to resize these uh, Z sketches here and when I do this this will uh, resize them and work somewhat like the flush brush so when I use the flush resize and drag down all right now when we look at it and we tip it to the side here remember I brought this one out here in the middle it towards the front well now it's flush 
so it works like flush brush but we still got this little uh, bed shape to it so if I turn it in this direction start at the top it's already resized but it's gonna make them flush control Z that a couple times and bring this back the next one we're gonna go over is the bulge here and basically this will bulge it in this area when we drag out it a few times then if we press the alt key down and keep it held down and drag on it back and forth we get this let's move the intensity up so this will work really quick and the alt key to really kind of deflate it let's control Z that the next one we'll be going over is the bulge flush this is a combination of two of these in one it will bulge it and also keep it flush or kind of flat in other words if it works on the working plane anything facing towards me will kind of be flush and flat and anything on the back side will be bulged out so when I drag down on this like right here and drag a few times this will be kind of flattened and the back side will be a little bit bulged to see this a little bit better we'll crank up the intensity quite a bit and I'll just drag right here this will stay kind of flattened or flush and the back side will be bulged you can see we got the straight right here and the bulge in the back the next one we'll be going over is a let's see here the float we'll double click that um, before I do this I'll just go back to the uh, sketch and we'll drag one right on the front of it so we'll have this one right here and uh, we're gonna switch to the float here now as you can see the second strip is out in front but uh, I'm gonna take the one behind it and make it float out in front of the original one so when I drag just a little bit then it floats out in front of it then our next one here we have the um, let's see here push-pull well basically this is simple if I drag on it here it's pulling towards me you can see there I'll control Z that so that was pulling towards me so this is kind of push pull and if I hold the alt key you can see it's going in the other direction and we'll control Z that we'll go to the light box here and we got this one called fuse this kind of merges them so if we start down here and we'll merge them together and we'll control Z that back so in this next part here I pause the video again and we'll turn on a play frame and you can see I got some um, overlapping um, sketch here uh, another way that we can fuse this is um, using the smooth brush I'm gonna hold the shift key down and I'm gonna switch to smooth 4 now if I hold the shift key down and I just drag down you can see it kinda gets a little bit lumpy there and I have to work it back and forth back and forth now if I wanna fuse this real quick I'll just hold the shift key and click on the um, outer one then I'm gonna let go of the shift key and just drag down real slowly and you can see how this is all fusing together as one. I'm not having to drag back and forth. And I'll do that again. Um, 
this is going to be just with the shift key and I'm going to try smoothing it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth and it's taking forever. Control Z that. Come up here, click one time on the shift key, let go of the shift key and just drag down and it fuses back together. Um, if we open up this uh, divider over here and we got this brush palette over here, if you don't see it you'll have to drag it over to the side here like this and uh, a lot of these smooth brushes when I hold down the shift key we, we went over a few of these smooth brushes and there's a few settings that you can do down here that are associated with that like the coverage position um, this typically um, how far it's going to embed when you smooth it then the um, coverage radius this kind of uh, is like the um, ends of the strip where they intersect how you know you want them to smooth and we got the uh, coverage color here well this is for like um, when we're doing this with some color and uh, we want some gradient to it so how much gradient we want and uh, we'll get in that here in just a little bit but if you really want to see how these um, really work as you can see when I went over these options here all you gotta do is hold the shift key and come over here and we'll shift click um, smooth one then you'll see these sliders change when I select something I'll select that one and that one and you can see that one right here that I selected this one that didn't change anything all the um, you can see the coverage and the uh, position and radius that are set to zero and you can adjust the smooth settings through the smooth modifier Uh, this next step is a little tip if I'm trolling on here and you can see that uh, I'm doing a fairly decent job there. It's following along pretty good and control Z that um, we can also use the stroke option here really not going to go into this part but this is kind of a just a quick little tip and we'll increase the radius here. This will make our strokes a little bit smoother and I get a nice flow. So we can get a nice flow with a lazy mouse, and that's kind of handy. Control Z that. We'll turn that stroke back off. And another thing is, when I'm, I might want to sometimes paint on this with some color. If I change the color here, um, the whole thing's changing color. So if I draw something green here, and I want to change it to red or something, well, everything's turning to red now. Well, I'm only limited to one color. Well, we'll control Z that and we're going to start off with the white here and we got the RGB channel that is active. This is for color. We're going to go over to color and we're going to fill object. So with that said, if we switch a color here, now nothing is changing. So now I can drag down like this and when I hold the shift key and smooth it you can see we're getting this gradient so if we open this back up and we got this cover here for the um, gradient here so we'll hold the control key you can see the gradient right there sometimes you got to reset your brushes and sometimes you got to start a new um, sketch to see the effects so it was set at 50 this time so um, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to hold the shift key down and set it to zero and we're gonna do a red or green one there and do a red one and this is gonna blend between the two and we're gonna hold the shift key and you can see now we're not getting any gradient because it's set it at zero so let's try this again and uh, hold the shift key and we're gonna set it somewhere about 50 percent somewhere around there and I'm going to do a color here change the color here then I'm going to hold the shift key and now you can see we're starting to get that blending between the two colors so we're getting some gradient here so let's say I'm finished and got my new Z sketch over my skeleton here if we come over to the edit sketch here and uncheck that there's my skeleton if I turn on the show sketch here then we can show the sketch and it's transparent now what I want to do is uh, on this transparent sketch here I want to move that along with my skeleton so for this to happen we need to press bind here 
that way both of them move in sync so if I was to rotate this they both rotate in sync and we can even move it if we want to and stretch it way out like that so um, I'm gonna do a little demonstration before I get into this uh, soft armature binding and for this little demonstration here I want you to pay attention to the shoulder area right here and when I rotate this down everything looks pretty normal here but if I do any kind of adjustments on this soft bind this is going to determine um, how these two meshes follow one one another in sync and you can do a um, real soft or real hard and um, when you make a setting let's say I'm gonna go drastic this way and reset the binding so this new settings take effect and when I rotate it now the shoulders are going through the mesh and this is not what I want so this is why this uh, soft binding is here so you can adjust it on how much you want to have it follow the other mesh I'll set it down to 10 and reset my binding so this takes effect well that's pretty good there um, there might be a reason that you may need to turn off this binding is if we look down here in the knee area here well the link here um, on the skeleton is way too low and this is not my pivot point where I want the legs to bend at um, in the knee area so typically I would just turn off the binding and I would grab this area right here let's go on the move and I would drag this drag it up a little bit right here in the knee area press binding and I always press reset for my new settings to take effect then I will rotate this and this is where I want it to rotate now when you go back into edit sketch here and we're going to draw mode and we're going to add something right here so we're going to turn off the edit sketch and uh, if I try moving in the shoulder area right here well the two new ones I added do not follow it is because I added them and they're new so if I want them to follow I would press reset binding and when I do that now they will follow together we're going to turn on uh, edit the sketch here and we're going to go to the minimum z-sphere distance we're going to go to draw mode and we're in the sketch here sketch one and I'm going to remove a few of these with the alt key and we're going to move here and here and here so if we turn this all the way down this is the distance between the z-spheres as they come out So when I drag out like this they are very close together and the distance real tight so even if I smooth this you'll see it smooths out really nice this is maybe something you want or don't want press alt key and we're going to move a few here now if we crank the distance up to number one you can see the spacing gets further apart so when this is something we want we'll turn off the edit sketch and we're going to reset the binding to make sure everything's going to move together and we'll move that there and reset that this, this, this is something you have to tweak a little bit it's not too complicated but I think you get the point on that right there here is optimize um, optimize means reduce when you are in edit sketch mode and you press the optimize here what this does if there's any um, hidden spheres inside this will delete the hidden ones that are no longer in view on the canvas and this will delete them because a lot of times when we are dragging 
over the top and make a new sketch here we'll get some that are underneath and we can't see them and this will delete them so we can preview this here if we um, turn on the polyframes here um, then we press the A on the keyboard we are viewing this as a unified skin if we come over to the unified skin here we are pressing actually this button here which is the A key so we can see the preview so we have this subdivision count right here so if I move this to any number let's say number three when I make this a unified skin and we'll have a subdivision of four it'll give it an extra one so whatever we have will have one extra subdivision level now this is for the resolution so if we turn this up a little bit and preview this this is going to take a little bit longer. The more um, resolution you have, uh, the more the detail that it will capture. But um, when you're just previewing this as a Z sketch, it's probably not good to mess with the setting until you're finally finished. Because a lot of times you may want to preview this on and off. And if you got too much resolution, well, it's going to be very slow all the time. So then we got this uh, skin smoothing basically it will smooth it out and anytime that you want to see any kind of changes and, and see how it's going to look well we can just move this and uncheck the preview and press it again and once again it's going to take a little bit of time so I'm gonna well I was going to pause the video but it kind of sped up there a little bit then we got the density right here this will uh, allow you to uh, make this, uh, as you can see here, this Z-sphere here. Let me undo the polyframe. This will make this link a lot smoother. Basically what this does, if you crank it up, it's going to calculate a bunch more Z-spheres between these two. And it will make things a lot smoother. So if I uncheck the preview and press it again, and give it a second we'll see some smoothness probably see a lot more down here in the leg area and you can see now it kind of smooths it out which is pretty good and uh, we're gonna go ahead and bring that back and uh, when I move this polish slider here this is for the polish and once I press the polish, the border comes up and a few other options. If it's set to zero, it's no longer there. So I'll crank it back up to maybe seven or a little polish. And basically these little circles here, if they're, you have an open one and a closed one, the closed one will smooth it out a lot and the open one will help maintain the volume. This is kind of uh, the group border, how many loops per the group. So let's go ahead and just take a look at four here. And we'll preview this and give it a second. And another second and it'll be done here shortly. And like I said, the reason why it's taking so long is because my resolution is up quite high. And it's almost done. Then we get something like this. We turn on the uh, polyframes here. We got these little loops that are right in here. I don't know if you can see them but uh, I'll just show you here in just a second basically uh, let's frame this back real quick and well you can see how that kinda looks if you want it like that then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this a unified skin and we're at uh, the subdivision of three which we'll get four make unified skin and when we come up here we'll have this one that's called skin 
and we'll switch that over. Then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to control click and control click. I'm going to try zooming in here. It's really bogging my computer down is because uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see these loops, but uh, I'll see if I can bring them up for you. Basically, here are the loops right here. Um, it's going to look a little funny in the video. Um, I'll make them show up a little bit better by going to deformation and uh, we'll inflate these just a little bit. And I'll bring everything back by control clicking. And you'll see here in a second. Now these are the loops right there. And as I said before, we had it set to 3 and it gives a subdivision of 4. I paused the video and loaded the mesh up again because it was bogging down my computer. What we made here was a unified skin. This is a voxel based type mesh. It's alright for blocking in, but I, I personally don't care for this type. I mean, I use it, but not a lot. But we have this other one called adaptive skin. And everything's all grayed out. We need to turn off the edit sketch here. Then we get this option to preview this as an adaptive skin. When I press preview, it looks nothing like my Z sketch. And the reason is, is because we need to resize the skeleton to approximate the um, same size as the uh, Z sketch. So for this to happen, um, we make sure that the bind is off. And uh, I need to put some links where I can kind of scale this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here in the thigh area and click. This is going to put a break in the link here. Turn off polyframes off, maybe you can see a little bit better. Here in the calf area, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but I'm going to just show you a demonstration. And we need to scale this up. We want to scale it big enough, and we don't really want it to pop through the transparency here. I mean, may need to bring this up a little bit big here. And like I said, I'm not going to model this whole thing, but I'll just kind of show you a little bit right here. And it's taking quite a bit of drag in here to get this to scale up. And I'm just going to do a couple more here so you can kind of see how this will work. Maybe a little bit here in the chest area. We'll call it quits. We're just looking at the lower half for right now. Really don't want it popping through, and we need to move this up a just a little bit here. That looks good. And basically, this is kind of trying to project on here. So when I preview this, we get something like this. Well. We're not looking at the top half, we're looking at the bottom half. It's looking pretty good. Now we can um, increase the density, which will even look even better. Um, best thing to do is look at some of the problem areas, like down in here in the crotch area. This is just nothing but tweaking, but everything else down here looks fairly decent. Um, I have another video about all these types of settings through here, but I won't go over it in this part here. Then when we're done, we'll just... Um, make our adjustments and press make adaptive skin and we come up here well I like to move my slider all the way to the right this will pick up the last tool that was created and there's our new mesh and uh, I'll just scale this up a little bit so you can see it a little bit better and we go to the geometry here and we have our subdivision levels As you can see, I was using this uh, kind of a skeleton figure here when I was using the edit sketch. That's just one way. 
and you know we can select a just a single Z sphere go to edit sketch and sketch freely here whatever we want we can select the demo soldier we'll frame that up go to sub tools and we'll pin the Z sphere here uh, if you don't see it um, first thing we need to do is make sure it's selected and activate transparency and we're gonna go ahead and move this up a little bit here and I'll turn on the X for the cemetery make sure I go back and draw mode very important for this part and we'll knock off the transparency and go into sketch mode and activate that and you can kinda do kinda crazy stuff across the face let me kind of zoom in here a little bit so you can see a little bit better. I'll click and move a couple of these right here. Around the head, whatever it takes, whatever you want to do. And we'll smooth that out. And smooth that out there. Then you can kind of make some cool stuff like that, whatever you want. I'm going to give you just a brief, quick overview of how I made this uh, Z Sketch brush here. It's called Sketch Minus 25. Um, basically what I did was um, this is a sketch brush and I did my adjustments here in the settings and I did a screen capture of this program then I cropped out this little image you see here with a circle at this is the same image right here so basically um, I cropped this image and saved it to the hard drive and it says select icon so I select the icon and I located that image and once I loaded it it made it to this image that you see right here then when you get done you press save as and there's certain areas that you can save this to and this one is in the Z data folder and brush presets and that makes it every time that I start up the program it's located up in here or down here somewhere and um, this is what I prefer. Now you can get it to load in the light box if you do not want it to load up here in startup. But I'm not really going to get into that whole detail. Another thing is I gave the name of the brush here to sketch minus 25 and that indicated exactly what the embed was. So I kept the brush the same name as the embed that I put on here. So it's kind of easy to recognize by the name and also by the icon itself showing the in embed in it. I kind of want to go over this unified just a little bit. I went over it earlier, but it was kind of hard to see in the video. So I kind of uh, made another little example. Maybe things will show up a little bit better. Um, my resolution's at 64, and we're going to preview that. And this is just the, the density of the mesh. This is, you know, how many polygons so we can increase the polygons by adding some more to the resolution and preview this right here and it also helps maintain the shape quite a bit so let's go ahead and set that back down for right now 64 and preview that again then we got this smooth slider um, basically this smooths the whole thing out if you set it down to zero and press preview you get this kind of uh, Lego look to it. It's cubicle here if you decide that you want that. Now if I move it back to somewhere to 10 we have to uncheck preview and preview it back again. Um, another thing is we have this uh, polish here and then we have the border and the allow tries. Well the border and the allow tries is inactive and grayed out is because the polish is set to zero. Once we get it past zero then we get this uh, border and allow tries. So when we select this, basically what this border is, is these rings right here on this edge loop. So if I change it a little bit more and preview it again, 
then we get some more edge loops. Let me see if I can tone that down and show up a little bit better. And you can see them there. Then you got the uh, allow borders to have all tries, and that's for triangles. And here's the edge loops right here. All right, I'm going to be going over this rigging here, but before I really get into this part here, I do want to bring up a little special note here. Is um, just in case this happens to you, um, as you recall, I made a sketch brush here called Sketch Minus 25. Well, ZBrush crashed, and I no longer have that brush. And actually, that brush is not even on my hard drive. Uh, this has happened to me twice now. So, mysteriously, it is gone. So, if you value any custom um, brushes or anything that you bring into ZBrush, I would highly recommend to make a backup copy. So, with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So, basically, um, this uh, rigging works with the Z spheres. I'm in edit mode and I'm going to be rigging this dock. I'm not going to do a full rig on it and this dock has actually no subdivision levels and if it did I'd want to bring this down to the lowest one before I got started. In other words if I select a dog and I go to the uh, geometry here if it's got well I'll just, I'll just do it. All right, we'll just bring it we had it at three and we'll bring it to the lowest one here. And we're going to back over here. Then we're going to start our rigging. So typically we need to select the mesh. And this is our dog here. And we're going to bring him in here. And then we're going to go ahead and scale down this uh, sphere here in the center. So we'll let's scale this down. And I'm not going to do anything particular. Like I said, I'm not going to do the whole dog here. So I'm going to bring it about right here. And I don't have any cemetery on, so uh, let me just go ahead and move my draw size down a little bit. And we kind of alt key and drag to zoom this in. And we're going to go back into draw mode. And I'm going to bring one out. And this is kind of where you have to pay attention to what I'm doing. Because what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to drag one out and I'm going to hold the shift key and it's going to create one the same size. And it's going to come out directly towards the front. Now I'm going to do this once and I can repeat my stroke by pressing the one on the keyboard and I'll show you what this does. Um, what's going to happen is it's going to extend it and create a link then it's going to extend it and create another in-between link. So with that said I'll just show you. So basically we're in draw mode and I want to get in the center and I'm going to drag out a little bit then I'm going to hold the shift key and it looks like the same Z sphere but actually it's the same size. Then I'm going to let go all the keys that means the shift key and left mouse button then I'm going to press the one on the keyboard twice once twice as you can see now it's coming out towards me now I got all these little links here so basically that was drag hold the shift key to get the same size let go of all the keys and press on the number one on the keyboard to extend this then we're going to go ahead and just move these up here a little bit in order As you can see, I want this one down here, and I kind of want one in the neck area, so I'll just go to draw mode, and I'll break a link here, and we can just start scaling uh, accordingly however we want. Scale that down, and like I said, I'm not going to get anything in particular here, but uh, let's go to move mode here. I added one when I should have. That's one thing about ZBrush. When you start doing stuff here, you always got to watch your modes in because sometimes um, if you're in the wrong mode, you'll be doing the wrong thing. So it's really particular how you got to work it. So I'm not so worried about the back. This looks close enough. I'll scale down the nose just a little bit. So we get something like this, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to frame this back a little bit here. That's a little bit too much. Let me zoom that back. Then we're going to press this bind mesh. What's going to happen? It's going to bind the two meshes. It's going to bind the Z sphere to the dog. So when we press this, this will come active. Then wherever I move the Z spheres, the dog will follow. So if I was to rotate this, 
you can see the dog following. Now if I go to move mode, let me bring this back a little bit further. I'm going to go move it. I'm going to grab this chain link right here and I'm going to press the alt key to extend his neck. All right, now if we want to preview this, how this is going to look, well, we can press the A on the keyboard or we can come over to the adaptive skin and press preview. And this is what the dog looks like with a long neck. So let's say, no, I don't want that, so I'll just go to move and bring this back. Hold the Alt key and drag it back right here. And maybe do a little rotation. Uh, you can see you know, I didn't um, do the legs and it's trying to follow the whole thing, so we're really not worried about that part anyway. And we can preview that. And we get something like this. Now we got the little action line here. That's typical how that works. It's just showing and I really don't care for it there, but that's alright. If I want to move, remove it or just kind of hide it, I'll just switch to draw mode. Then we get something like this. And uh, press A on the keyboard. And then we get something back like this. Now if we want to delete this dog, we would delete the mesh right here. So if I delete this, we can start all over. Well, I'll just show you. We'll just delete it. And we get the Z-Sphere. And basically we'll select the dog again. And of course, so I'm going to have to realign everything back up, which isn't too much of a problem. But And I'll just get a little bit close. Then we're going to go ahead and bind this. And I'll just do a little something and let's say move this down here. And press A on the keyboard. Let's say this is what I'm happy with. Well, I can move this density slider here. This is for the density. Well, actually, it's like the how much uh, geometry do I want to? High geometry, I would crank this up real high. If I want it real low, I would crank it real low. Let's say I'm going to set it to number four. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this adaptive skin. And when I do this, um, it says creating skin. I may have to wait a second here. Oh, and there it is right over here. There's our new skin dog. Remember this one is at four. And we go to the geometry here. Uh, this one is at 4. And we have our low and high subdivision levels. So I'm going to show you another way that you can um, rig this dog. And we'll go on the next part. So you can see I brought out a new dog here after pausing the video. And we're going to go to the sub tools here. And we're going to go to a pin. And we're going to pin this Z-Sphere. And we're going to come down here and make sure we select the Z-Sphere here. And we'll probably need to turn on some transparency so we can kind of see. And we're going to scale this down. Now I want to make sure my cemetery is on first. The X here. And we'll just kind of scale this down. And I'm going to make it a little bit small here and I'm going to move it up. And I even will probably even scale a little bit smaller. Now basically I'm going to be making kind of like a skeleton bone here where it can um, have uh, joints where it can move. I'm not so concerned about the scaling size right now. So with that said, um, we need to go back into the uh, draw mode. Before I do that, I want to make sure this is, this is active right here. And you can do that by clicking it and moving it or just touching it and you always kind of want to have this uh, sphere to start off in the center um, this is kind of typically um, where you'd want it on a dog if you did it on a human you'd want the starting point on the waist so this is kind of in the center of the whole thing so it's active we're gonna go to the draw mode here and we're gonna have to turn off one of these ones right here this is gonna be the ghost transparency is still on 
and I can see this, but what's going to happen is when I click here, it's going to connect right to the mess, and I'm going to hold the shift key, and it's going to be the same size. I'm going to click down here, hold the shift key, it's going to be the same size. And I'm going to repeat that down here, and click and stop. Now I want to select up here a little bit, so I can um, hold the control key and click right here, and it's going to start right there. Then I'm going to start up here in the um, front leg. I'm going to click, hold the shift key, and snap. And click, shift key, and snap. And click, shift key, and snap. And click, and hold the shift key, and it'll snap to the same size. So now I got this far right here, which is pretty good. Now I'm going to have to turn on, turn off the cemetery by pressing the X on the keyboard. And I need to bring one up from the center here. And we'll just drag one about right here. I do want to take a look at that. And that's going to be right on the outside here. Then I'm going to repeat the process. So I'm going to if I have to, I'm going to bring the control key over here. It should turn green. I'm going to click it. And I'm going to bring it here. Hold the shift key. Then I'm going to work my way up the dog a little bit here. Shift key. Click, shift key. Click, shift key. Alright, um, I could start one from here. So, what I want to do is I want to... Uh, Hold the control key and just click this back one. And hold the shift key. Click here, hold the shift key. Click here, hold the shift key. Click here and hold the shift key. Then you can see everything is kind of following the dog. So uh, let's see if I get down here and we'll just follow the tail here. This makes everything follow in a good alignment. So I'm going to go ahead and go into the next step. Now if you recall, I had the ghost off when I was making these sphere links down towards the tail. And um, this will make it connect right on the tail. Um, without this option, it is very difficult to follow this path. So this makes it a whole lot simpler. So basically my next next step would be, I would typically align these links somewhere in the middle of the mesh, let's say uh, this whole section to the top here, and just bring it down about halfway, let's say between the top of the nose and the bottom of the lip in the halfway mark. That's where your pivot points are at. But in this little demonstration, I'm not gonna go ahead and bother with that, but uh, this is something that you might wanna do. But uh, this is still workable, so I'll just show you. And uh, we're going to select the dog up here, and we're going to go ahead and get a clone copy. This is going to just get a copy of them. And the tool didn't change. We still got the dog and the sphere here, but we're going to delete the dog this time. So we're going to delete the dog here. Press OK. Then we got this uh, chain link here, skeleton. Let's close all this up. Then we're going to go to the rigging here. Select the mesh here. And select the dog back. Um, of course I can still align it if I want to right now. But I'm just going to go ahead and press bind mesh. And this is going to bind both the meshes together and combine them. So I'm going to press the alt key and just kind of scale that back a little bit. Then we can kind of do our little rotation whatever it takes that we want to do. It works fairly decent. And we can also move the tail here if we want. And if we press the A on the keyboard, we get something like this. So um, let's go ahead and I want to move that dog's head a little bit. So I'm going to drag up and hold the Alt key. And maybe we can even scale it up. Press A on the keyboard. And we got this long neck chihuahua, it looks like. So let's go over to the adaptive skin. I'm going to leave the density at 2 and press make adaptive skin. 
and when it's done we have our new skin dog right here and he has two subdivision levels now I'll be going over topology and before I do this I have the demo hit here looks all right here but when we turn on the polyframes I did something to him and I made some triangles and uh, some different types of uh, screwed up mess on here this is typically not a good mesh I mean visually by the eye right here it looks all right but if you try maybe bringing this into a game engine it probably wouldn't work very well and uh, if you tried selling these on the internet as a model people don't like screwed up meshes when they try buying these so um, we're going to use the topology to resurface over the top of this and I'll just show you a short example and show you how to do how it works and get you up and running now I have another uh, learning course called topo gun and it's very very specific about topology and it does a really good job and it has a lot of options but in the meantime we're going to use ZBrush so basically uh, we're going to select this Z sphere here and uh, we're going to go down to rigging we're going to press select mesh then we're going to select the demo head here and we're going to close this back up now we got this option for topology here now when we bring our cursor in here we want to make sure our draw size is to one for right now when I bring my cursor down here by the two-tone ball where it separates different colors, my cursor will start turning green. When I move it away, they'll go back to red. Now that's and this axis is showing where this axis is at. That's why my cursor is indicating where it's at. Now when I drag it up in the Y axis, it's doing the same thing. But when I move them apart, we don't get the green until they meet in the middle. So basically where both axes split they meet right here underneath the nose this is good to know because when we edit the topology here we don't get that ball to see what's going on here but if we can still get this uh, green indication because um, a lot of times when we make our mesh we want to know where that center is at most of the times especially if we are using something that is that is symmetrical so with that said um, let's zoom in here and get started now I'm in draw mode and the draw size is 1. I'm going to draw a square box around the eye, close as I can get around the eye. There's all different types of methods, so different methods apply for different meshes. So we're going to click here, click here, click here, and click here. Now I'm going to diselect so I can make a new box. So you can see it's something still active over here, so I'll come over here on the canvas and click. That diselects something that it was already selected and I'm gonna start a new box around here I'm gonna start off in a 45 degree angle from this one here start clicking here offset it maybe in a 45 degree angle here offset it in a 45 degree angle here here then I want to connect to the first one then I'm going to diselect now what I want to do is um, maybe to see this a little bit better in video maybe we'll switch this to red wax and see if it'll look yeah it looks a little bit better now what I want to do is I want to connect these so once again I will click here and here diselect click here and here and diselect click here and here and diselect and click here and here and diselect now I want to do a crisscross pattern. One, um, I'm going to make some edges straight this way, down, and straight across. I'm going to try doing it somewhere in the center. So I'm going to bring my cursor here. And you can see that some of these lines will, if you hover over them long enough, you'll see like a point, or, or the, they'll turn yellow, whatever, or a little bit, little bit thicker. I'm going to click here and here. Now I'm going to deselect over here, and I'm going to start here and here diselect here and here diselect here and here and diselect so my next step is I want to move these around so we'll press the move here and I'll move some of these corners in 
and I want to move them up by the eyes here. I'm going to grab all four corners and start moving them in. So I can start shaping around the eye socket. And I want to start grabbing, not the corners on the outer ones, and we'll just start bringing this one out right here. And a little bit here. And this one here. Now I want to kind of keep an edge flow a little bit with this eyebrow, so I may bring this one in just a little bit to keep that edge flow going. Cheekbone, I want it to fall a little bit, so we'll keep that in a little bit. Don't have to be perfect. Then when we're getting done here, we'll press the A on the keyboard, or you can come over here to the adapter skin and press preview. So I prefer to use the A on the keyboard. You can see there. So our next step is um, we're going to add a few more. So I'm going to do a little bit on the nose here so let's go ahead and zoom in here I want to follow this nose it's got a little curve to it here so I'll select here here and here now I'm doing three of them because I want to match the three back here just select and I want to connect these now a good thing to do is um, most of the times when you come over here you can click and get by with it and sometimes you can't sometimes you'll miss it so the best way to find out that you're connecting is hold the control key and click it this indicated it's highlighted, it's, it's, it's active, so that tells me it's good to go. So we'll just click here. So then this next one here, control click, and click the next one up. Down here, control click, and click the next one up. And we get something like this. Let's turn off this loco, this thing here. That way when I spin it, it always spins right around this axis here, so I don't get offset. Now, this is kind of where I like the center one here. So I will click when it turns green. I'm going to make three points here. One, two, and three. That one's active. So I can just come down here and click this one. Come up here, control click this one. Come down here and click this one. Control click this one. Come down here and control click not control click but let off the control key and click that one now I want to just select everything now before you when you start going along always press the A key as you're going along in each step because things could mess up and we don't want things to mess up because uh, we want to catch it before we have that problem so every time that I may make a step I may press the A key to make sure everything is okay so let's say I wanted to make another loop around here on the inner size loop. Well, I would start in the middle here and click here. Now once I get going around a loop, we want to go all the way completely around. If we don't, things don't may not work like they're supposed to because this thing likes all quads. In other words, if I stopped here and didn't finish here, well, in, inside here, we got more than four points. Four points will make up a quad and cause a problem. So we're going to finish off here and just select, press A key, and make sure everything's okay. This is the delete topology mesh, delete topo. Um, basically what this does, this uh, new orange uh, wireframe mesh I have here, this is the new topo. This will delete it. We don't want to do that. Um, for right now and we got the pre-vine uh, subdivision and the tuple vine smoothness well this works for the projection we'll go over this in just a little bit so uh, we're gonna go down to the max trip here and I'm going to press A on the keyboard and when I do I want you to keep an eye on this socket area right here and it will gap that close well if we turn on the wireframe what it's trying to do is trying to intersect and fill in this gap hole now you can retopple the surface and extract things to make like sunglasses or whatever you want but in this case I don't I want to have an eye socket here and this is not working for me so um, we're gonna set this down to the lowest one which is four then we press the A in the keyboard then we get that hole so this is basically how you would want to work that then you have the um, 
skin thickness. So basically when you preview this, we'll just turn this up a little bit and press A on the keyboard. Now for a pair of sunglasses, I might want something with a little bit of thickness in it. And you know, then I would probably want to fill my hole up. So we can just increase this and take a look. And we can make a pair of sunglasses and finish off the center here and down by the ears if we want to. We're going to type in zero and finish that one out and um, bring this one back to eight right there. Then when we preview this, if this something, if this is something that you like, like here, and we go to the adaptive skin here, um, you can adjust your um, density. And once you adjust your density and you say, hey, this is what I like, then um, you can press make adaptive skin. Then your new skin will be up here then you'll have subdivision levels all the way up to four kinda like the one you had here at four. Now I went back to the rigging so well not the rigging but the topology here and I'll have to press the A on the keyboard to bring everything back. Then I'll go ahead and this little example and delete the topo. Let's see if Control Z will bring this back. Well, it did. That worked. Then uh, we got the pre-bind here. So basically, uh, we need to turn on the projection here. And uh, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and load up another mesh. So this will show up a little bit better. So we have the pre-bind subdivision right here. So basically how this works, if I just press the A key, we get this right here. And uh, we're going to press the A key again. So for this to work, we need the projection. So we press the projection here and press the A key again to take a look. Um, hardly almost any difference between the two that I just did. But anyway, if what this does, it, it projects this uh, topology back to the uh, head here and we need a little bit more subdivision to bring to capture a little bit more detail so we'll kick up to three then I'll press the A key here then you can see now we're starting to get some uh, detail where it's picking up on the head around the eye sockets and the more that I add the more detail it will grab as you can see here now I'll press the A key again now if I turn off the projection it's just it's not going to project back on the head so I'll press the A key then we get this smooth finish so if we turn this all the way down, turn on the projection again. All right, as you can see, we don't have any uh, a lot of geometry to project to, but we can also use this density if we crank this up to let's say four, and you can see it grabbing some detail there. So let's set that back down. Then we got this uh, topo bind smoothness. This smooths out the bind um, right here. And uh, let's see what else we got. Now they got the P multi here. This is a projection multi. Um, this is kind of like a tweak. Um, when things are not working right, you you may want to use this. I don't, I'm not sure if it's really a tweak, but uh, let me set the subdivision up a little high because we're using projection. Um, because there's really no document on this, so. If you have something that's going wrong, you could probably try this and maybe tweak out maybe a problem area. Now, actually, this slider here, projection strength here, well, actually, this is a tweak. Now, if you have uh, a projection projection that doesn't look normal when I project it, um, you would want to adjust this uh, slider to see if you can get it to get a little bit more accurate. Um, there could be a lot of things that could cause this not to project right. One could be flip normals. You may need to switch this to the negative one. Then press the A key to see if it will fix it. This is something you got to keep on trying and moving the slider. Press the A key, move the slider, press the A key, just to see if it's going to help fix it. Then we got the projection range. Let's say as example, I made a mesh over top of this ear, and you can see where it's got this little dips in and out of this ear. Well, this will project the distance of the range between the mesh and your new topology uh, wireframe. 
So this is basically for the distance. So let's go into the next step. Let me make myself a little bit more clear about tweaking or tweak as I called it earlier. It's when you move one of these sliders that, uh, that can fix things. When you fix things you are tweaking it. So basically if you press the A key and it doesn't look right you would move the slider and tweak it until you could get something um, your results are better. And sometimes these sliders do not always fix something and you may need to tweak it another way by going to move and you might have some points that are just way too far out or could be a lot of things or some overlapping and you would need to move these and adjust it and tweak it in that area that you might have the problem. And another thing is about this projection range here. Um, basically what I was saying is if we have uh, topology over top of this ear and we have these little dips that go in and out. Now if the projection range does not have enough range distance it may not project that mesh down in these deep gullies down in here. Maybe on the top surface it'll do a lot better, but if it does not have a, enough range, it will not project down in these deep crevices. So another thing is, you may need to tweak this by project, using the projection range. Alright, I paused the video and we're back in the original state. We're not doing the projection anymore. And I'm going to preview this with the A key and let's say this is I'm happy with this and I can I can resave this as another retopple mesh and another thing is I can go to file and save as and this is another way of saving um, a lot of information we're not going to go in that part but if we want to use this as another type of uh, retopple mesh and save it a different way well basically what we would want to do so we have the same vertices is we want to bring this down to the lowest density and let's preview this and this is what we want and when we get done we can make this adaptive skin and there's our new skin right here and we can save this out if we want to use it later well let's go ahead and delete the topple here and you can see we it's gone right here uncheck the edit right here and then we're going to select the topple and we're going to select that new mesh and we're going to go back in to edit topple. And there's our new retopple mesh. Now, like I said, we want to save it at the lowest one because we don't want to have a lot of points in here because it gets really messy. And another thing is when you are loading up a retopple here, it does not take a lot of a, it will not handle a lot of geometry. And it will really slow down your computer because it's not designed to um, do that. And when you're retoppling something, you want to make it as low as you can. You don't want to have a lot of vertices out here if it's possible. Here's a little tip. Uh, we're in draw mode and I want to delete this edge here between this point and this point. So what we're going to do is insert a point and just click here. Then I'm going to press the Alt key down and you'll see a little minus sign by my cursor and we're going to alt click this and it's going to remove, remove the edge between the two outer points. Let's control Z that. Now if we want to move a point, well we can go into move mode up here. Draw size is to 1. If I move this point here, it's just moving that point. The surrounding points are staying still and are not influenced. If we want to influence the area, move um, a few of them around the surrounding area will increase the draw size and when I move this some of the uh, points that are in that radius will move along with it. Uh, this is also is the same way with scaling. As you can see there. I'll be going over the display property here and we have the first slider is the draw smoothness then we have the draw resolution then we have the edge smoothness now the edge smoothness here is grayed out is because the draw smoothness tolerance is set to zero we're going to be using this uh, round 
ball here it's got some hard edges and basically all three of these sliders um, will indicate and show you and display how this will look when you draw it on the canvas so if we draw it out now we still kind of get this you know original shape what we see here so if we really want to see the effects we'll come up to the transform here and we're going to uncheck the quick edit 3d we're going to uncheck that and um, we're going to leave everything at default for right now and i'm just going to drag everything out or just this out and let go not a whole lot of difference so what we're going to do is we're going to start cranking some of these up and these do all work together in combinations and i'll may move this up a little bit here and drag out and let go now you can see now it got kind of rounded right there so let me go ahead and crank that down a little bit draw it all out let go let me set my edge smoothness so that right here to zero zero edge smoothness and then let go then we have this um, ball shape a little bit more because we don't have no um it's getting rid of the um i don't have no edge smoothness and then this resolution here when i crank it up a lot full blast and let go now it it's looking more rounder if i smooth it to make it look real rounded so we're going to have a lot of smoothness and we have this draw resolution what this draw resolution does it just kind of mimics um of having a lot of subdivision levels and really it's just a visual effect and there's really not adding any um, geometry to it so when i drag this out we're going to have a lot of smoothness we're going to have a lot of resolution and we're going to have zero smoothness on the edge and you can see right there now it's going to have a little bit of um we can tweak things back and forth and mess with them and it's just something you got to mess with but anyway that's basically how that works now when you're using the draw smoothness tolerance um, you can use this with the sub palette from the deformation and come down here with the smoothness and move this a few times and this will work in conjunction with this draw smoothness tolerance now since uh, I was showing you about the um, quick edit here and it looked a little bit smoother with this off or actually quite a bit now it's recommended when you are modeling to have this on it's going to be a lot better on your computer resources and we don't want to have this off and start having problems so just because it looks a little bit better doesn't mean that we should have this off at all times now there's all different types that way we could render maybe when I get ready to render maybe the uh, old-fashioned way without the BPR render here then maybe I might want to turn that off but when I'm modeling it's best to leave it on we'll just kind of keep it as simple as that and another thing is we have this double-sided right here for the double-sided well all polygons have a front side and a back side if this is off the back side will appear as it's being invisible so if we tip this up everything appears to be invisible all right by default this is off when you turn it on now you will be able to see a front and back side there's the front side when I tip it up then we can see the back side now this also is highly re recommended to have this off because when you are modeling what's happening and when you have it on it's trying to render both both sides and this will can also slow down your computer a little bit and we don't want to have that so you only have the sign when you need it or when you think you need it on then we have this flip here this flips the normals it's going to flip them inside out so if I flip here um, let's go ahead and turn tell me I got some geometry we're just going to kill that for right now and we're going to flip this that flips everything inside out typically you wouldn't want this really but you might have a problem area where you might have a hole somewhere and it might appear to be a hole and you want to fix it so as example if I bring my cursor over here and control key and the uh, shift key and we're gonna hide part of this let's turn the solo on so I don't want to see the eyeballs here and I want to flip the normals to this one here just to show you a little demonstration and we're gonna bring everything back well it appears that they are gone well they're not gone it's just because I flipped the normals on them if I flip turn it back this way you can see that they're still there 
and if I turn on the double sided it'll appear that the uh, nothing's wrong with it so this is kind of a way if you want to flip some normals because um, you might bring it in here and say hey I got a piece miss missing here and I if you turn it around and take a look at it you might be able to see the back side and say hey there's a problem area the normals are flipped and you can flip the normals as you can see I got two characters here they're all in one right here they're actually all different types of subtools and I got this right leg selected if I turn on the polyframe this back guy right here he is selected in that leg right there so we're gonna keep that in mind and we're gonna use the BPR transparent and um, this works for this BPR rendering setting right here or this icon but we need to go to the render here and we need to go to the renders property and we need to activate the transparent for the subtool transparency rendering. When we do this, um, then we'll press the BPR here. And that's going to make this just that subtool right there transparent. Alright, it did it a little bit. So maybe I want to um, increase a little bit. So what I can do is go to the render here. And then we go down to the BPR transparency right here and we got some more settings so I'm going to crank it up and we're going to do it again then we get a lot more transparency here and once I move this a little bit we lose all our rendering uh, effects there then we have the one that's uh, for the invisible mode we're going to switch that one over there and turn off the transparent so this is going to render it out as invisible so Okay, maybe you might like this, so we'll just see. It's like it's not there. But um, a good thing about this, which is a little bit different, is this will still cast the shadow down here in the floor, and um, it does not cast the shadow on itself. So this may be something that you want or don't want. The next one here is the BPR Smooth Normals. And um, once we have this activated, we need to go to the render and also make sure this one's activated because if not and we come down here and we press the smooth normals and press the BPR this is for the BPR smooth normals as you can think, see everything looks kind of really boxy looking it's not smooth this is supposed to smooth it out so we need to have both of these on to make sure this is going to work for this right here so when we press it again this will smooth out the normals and it'll make it appear that it's got a lot of subdivision level without needing it. See how smooth it looks? So if I move it just a little bit, it'll bring back and remove the um, rendering um, effect that I just did. The next one we have here is the BPR Material Blend Transition Range. So basically how this works is um, I'll have to set something up here real quick. So we're going to go up to the subtools. We're going to select the paint icon to enable poly painting. And we're going to select the MRGB here. And I'm going to embed this material because if I change the material right now, it changes with it. So we'll just go ahead and go to color and fill object. Then I'm going to paint with two different materials. So we'll turn on Zad here. And I will paint with this red here. And you can see it's kind of uh, not so smooth around the edges. And we'll do this one here. And we'll bring it to the side here. So we take a better look at it. Um, what we're going to have to do next, we still going to, if we come over here and look at the uh, settings here and we click something well nothing is happening it is because we need to come up here to the render setting and then we got the material blend and once we move this once I'm moving it with my cursor up here look at the bottom right in the display now it's moving now I can move it back and forth so and I'll press it here and now I have some adjustments here see now it's maxed out to 10 so if I was to go back to the rendering here um, I can even bring this higher. So if I go up to 20 and let go, this one over here will max out 20 and go no higher. But I'm going to bring it down here. Then we're going to render this out here. 
and give it a few seconds and it will start blending these and make them a lot smoother around the edges and blend together and just about done then we get something like this I'm going to uh, go ahead and move this a little bit now it's probably a little bit hard to see in the video but uh, I'll get it where it's kind of shining just a little bit here and I'm going to crank this up quite a bit and when I render this out I will pause the video until it's finished and give you the final results then you get something like this okay it's blended in right here I'm kind of paying attention between two different colors more than edges around here and now I had it set to 20 and you can go a lot higher and be careful when you get past 10 because things will start to get really slow. Um, this has got a lot of adjustment, so the higher you go, the longer it's going to take. So when I was working with that vest here with the material, well, that was basically a Polymess 3D. No different than um, this Polymess 3D here because we got the same settings right here. Um, if we switch to a 3D primitive, which will be basically most of all these meshes here when you start up a ZBrush. Well, these may have a little bit different settings to them. As you can see when I clicked it, we now have the Smooth H, the Smooth V, and basically these same top ones here have to do with Smooth, basically the same way when I switch it over to the Polymesh 3D. Now, this is something to keep in mind. It's not really a necessity for me to go into this part but I just wanted to kind of bring it to your attention because if I went over this, this here it would be really no difference than me going over some of these smooth options here and another thing is when we're using a primitive here we very seldom will model in this primitive anyway so this is just display this is nothing that uh, I really mess with a whole lot I leave everything at default and things work fine